Hello, my name is Mario. Welcome to another video. In today's episode, I will share with you another tip for building microservices in Go, specifically how to implement a graceful shutdown. Let's jump into the code. So what we have here is the code that I've been using for this video series. The link will be in the description, so please feel free to clone it, play with it, check it out. Um, so why do we need to implement graceful shutdown? Or why do we implement the logic for handling a graceful uh, shutdown? Just think in terms of what is going to happen if we have a service that is running and it is in the middle of a transaction, for example, or maybe it's in the middle of processing events, or maybe it's in the middle of sending events or doing whatever the service is supposed to be doing. If the uh, tool that we're using for orchestrating all our different services is saying, hey, we need to stop this uh, specific instance, it's going to do it right away. Depending on what service you're using, uh, if, there, if you're using, for example, Kubernetes, or if you're using ECS, Everything behind the scenes for those specific services happen to be using Docker. And if you haven't seen my previous video, I will leave the link in the description as well for how to container containerization, for how to create a container using Docker. So the whole point of this is that the way it works is that either, um, well, both Kubernetes and ECS send a signal to our service, our, our, our program, uh, to indicate, hey, it's about to, we're going to stop you in, X amount of time. And depending on the service that you use, you have different configuration and different timeouts that they give you. By default, the way it is, is uh, 30 seconds. So how do we implement graceful shutdown? The way it works is that we need to uh, basically listen for a signal that we're going to be handling and then do something with the service that we're trying to stop. Because we're using an HTTP server, there is a method called listen well listen and serve is the one that we use for creating the, the for opening the connections and listening to the connections but there is one called a shutdown and what shutdown does does is that as you may imagine it will shut down all the connections that currently exist the way this is implemented for listening to signals and implementing a graceful shutdown is that we are going to be Creating depending on the Go version that you use, both of these uh, pieces of code that I have here are sort of equivalent. And what it happens is that I am going to listen to a signal, and then I'm going to be waiting for that listen for that signal to be received, and then I'm going to trigger the shutdown of the service that I'm doing. It could be either, like I said, an HTTP server, or maybe if you're doing Kafka and you're consuming events, maybe you can stop uh, listening to those, those events or maybe you are using RabbitMQ or whatever service that you're using in your actual microservice, you can trigger that logic right there. One thing that I did, and if you look at the diff of the previous commit, or this current new commit rather, is that I organize the main in a way that I can specify or clearly indicate what are the steps that are happening when I'm setting up my service. So, and it, this will make more sense when I'm um, giving you, when I, when I you know, uh, uh, upload a video for testing actual main, but we can discuss that later. The way it is right now is that I'm actually focusing on only, hey, this is the configuration that I have right here. I'm reading the values from the flags that I define, and then below I'm running the code that I need to set up. That I'm, I'm calling run to set up the code that I need for running the actual service. So now one cool thing that I did, one one thing that I did is that I'm specifying a channel I'm returning a channel, I'm returning an error. The idea with the channel is that because we're running these two, <clears throat> we're running the servers, the service, the HTTP service in a different Go routine, we have a way to communicate with the client that literally triggered the function, which in this, in this case will be main. If anything happens before that, perhaps the setup is incomplete or the setup is uh, invalid, you, you will get an error right away. That's why you have these different methods, these, these two different arguments that are returned right here. So that's why you see there is an error. There is a channel, um, and a channel error and an error. And if you scroll down, you will notice that the actual channel error is instantiated only when all the other setup was valid. So when we were, able to, we were able to connect to the database, we were able to open a vault, we were able to set up uh, open telemetry, all the different things that we covered in previous videos. Now, what is important here is that uh, in the case of HTTP server, we need to clearly indicate that uh, if there is an error, 
uh, when this is closing an error that is returned is called error server closed which is triggered by the shutdown this is important to to keep in mind so when this happens uh, and when we're receiving the signal to shut down the service we don't return that back to the original client and therefore we don't fail or we don't return a fail failure when it didn't really actually fail and now let's run all of this i'm, I'm going to be using doc and compose up again and if you remember the, the 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 issues we had before is that some of the things don't run properly and because there is some like a race condition right there i didn't implement that and again i discussed that last time in the previous video so i'm going to be doing everything that i have right here in the instructions that i have in the readme so everything is working so i have everything running so if i do docker compose ps you will notice that everything is up right if i jump into our swagger ui i can create a task easily like you will expect new task and we did this last time during the docker compose docker uh, docker video and uh, i expected everything is working and everything is fine now what i want to bring your attention to is this specific log that is happening here this is for the api and i want to show you the code that is actually going to be triggered which is this section this go routine right here so what is going to happen is that as soon as docker compose says hey it's time to stop this process it will send a signal call sig term which is why we are listening to that right here and it will stop the process um, right away and because we're handling that if i do a docker compose down you will notice if i jump into my other terminal you will see that it's receiving the signal right here shutdown shutdown signal receive and it's doing shutdown complete so actually the implementation of the signals and handle uh, implementing this graceful shutdown is not really that complicated the the thing to keep in mind is how we are going to be organizing this setup and i want to bring your attention again to this because i think this is one of the most important things when setting up your main is that hey the way I like to do it is that you specify first the flags or the configuration that you need to therefore that are sort of like feeding into the next next steps then we load whatever setup that we need which in this case i like setting up my, my logger which i'm again i'm using zap and set up uh, open um, opening all the the, the uh, services that we, i need to connect to like vault or the database or setting up open telemetry and then finally i set up the server and I define a specifically a method, a function rather, that does, that does that specifically and doesn't include any of the other things. And the idea is that all of this is more or less um, separated of each other. It's sort of there is some sort of a, a way to notice clearly what is happening in each one of the steps. So this works. Now, if everything is stopped, so you do a Docker Compose. And I want to show you also, so everything is stopped. There's nothing else. I don't have any container running, but I do have some uh, stop containers that I want to run as well because I want to show you uh, how to how does how this works when we are actually doing the development. So if I do a go run rest server main and I use the the command that we used previously, you will notice that the service again is listening to in the port that I have here. And if I go to my service is right there if i do again it can do the same i'm going to create another one new one again just to give you to show you that everything is working as expected we copy this thing the id we get the id we try it out we run it and everything is fine again okay so everything seems to be working nothing is uh, failing or something like that so if i go here and press because I'm using Mac OS, if I press Control C, it will actually trigger again another signal and I'm listening to it and I'm reacting it to it. And because I'm using sort of if I'm running this in sort of I'm trying to I'm developing this at the moment and I'm trying to, you know, stop it and restart it. I can also listen to that one as well because I'm listening to the interrupt right here. So I just stop and the signal is received and the shutdown is completed. So again the the implementation of graceful shutdown is, is sort of a sort of easy if you think about it but it's important to understand why we're doing this in the first place and the whole point of uh, handling 
those signals that we're receiving from Docker in this case, because that's the containerization technology that we're using, it allows us to properly handle cases where we are, where we are, when we are producing or consuming events, or maybe we're doing some sort of task and then react to it and leave the data that we're inserting or deleting or doing whatever we have to be doing in a good state. With that being said, let me show you the actual configuration that is needed if you happen to be using Kubernetes. For Kubernetes, I will leave those links in the description as well. There is this uh, option right here called that explains what I was just describing, that it receives sig sig term to actually stop the pod, which will be kind of your process that you're running on Kubernetes. But there is a grace period right here that you can configure, that you can say, hey, by default is uh, 30 seconds. Um, but you can um, make it, you know, increase it to 60 or maybe lower it to, or what, do whatever you want to do. If you are using Amazon ECS, you can specify that value in the configuration of the container agent, which again, by default is 30 seconds. So again, what is the whole point of defining um, graceful or implementing a graceful shutdown is one, to make sure that the data that we're processing and we're consuming or writing or doing whatever data that we're doing, if we are persistent that data into some sort of a obviously persistent store, we are saving that data uh, in a valid state. We're not writing corrupted data, or maybe we're not reacting to those configuration or those changes that our orchestrator is using. If you don't use uh, Kubernetes or ECS, the approach that you need to take will be different. So this is specific to Docker, and when you're using Docker as the containerization technology for this. So with that, a lot, with that being said, thank you for watching. And again, if you have any questions or anything, just let me know. I will talk to you next time. Take care.